Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Dwayne Anderson bringing you yet another tableside message on this day, June 14th, 2020. And as I sit here and I look out the window and I listen to the birds chirping and I see the sun shining, I thank God for allowing me to see yet another day, a day that wasn't promised to me. Um, I just thank him to allow me to see yet another day. Um, and last night when I was uh, in my studies and I was flipping through old text and old sermons, um, I came across a very familiar story um, in the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. And in this story, we have the collision course of stories between one on one end of the spectrum, we have Jairus, the synagogue leader, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the woman who had the issue of blood. Uh, this train wreck. And in, in these stories, the question that came to my mind was, who told them about Jesus? Who told them about his grace? Who told them about his mercy? Who told them about his healing ability? You have, again, people on two opposite ends of the socioeconomic spectrum. You have Jairus, the synagogue leader. He had power. He was wealthy. He had influence, but he recognized Jesus and his power over life and death. He never met Jesus personally, but he heard of what he has done in, in the form of miracles and that he would be near within walking distance. Because of what he heard, he sought to be in the presence of Jesus to receive a healing for his daughter who was dying who was only 12 years old. But then we have the woman with the issue of blood. She was hemorrhaging. She was, um, in today's vernacular, she was um, on her monthly cycle, but it was a perpetual cycle. Uh, she was viewed as unclean and couldn't even go into the synagogue because, um, because of Levitical law, women could not enter into the synagogue when they were on their cycle. Uh, she was broke and broken. She spent all she had on doctors and, and, and for only her, her care and her symptoms to get worse. But she heard that Jesus was near and she sought, um, she sought to be in his presence. She thought that he could heal her when no one else could. She was a double outcast because of her condition and her financial status. Society treated the afflicted and poor bad then too. Don't get surprised. But the question is again, who have you told about Jesus? Just like they found out word of mouth about the master, who have you told about Jesus? While the world is protesting, the country is divided, and, 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 and we seem to be going in different ways, in different directions, divided on many different fronts, so what are we doing to foster a better? What are we doing to show those that we are connected with better or a, a, a different way of doing some things? What in our character and daily living points people to Jesus? Romans 12 and 2 says, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That testing you may concern what is the will of God. What is, here it is, good and acceptable and perfect. Now, no one's asking the Christian to be perfect. I'm not here standing on a soapbox telling you that you've got to be perfect. But perfection should be the goal. And Christ is that perfection that we should seek every single day. He is the goal. And when we make him the standard of learning, the standard of living, and the standard of loving, then we change the atmosphere everywhere we go. Second Peter 1, 5 through 7 tells us, For this very reason, make every effort, every effort, to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and last but not least, brotherly affection with love. When we are out and about, whether we're on a job, 
whether we're at the store enjoying a meal with the family, um, whether we're at the cookout in the backyard, anywhere we are, we must be a banner for Christ. What does that mean? We must show compassion to those who are left out, left behind and let down. That's what the world is missing right now. We're missing the compassion for those who are on the fringes of or on the fence of whether they're going to uh, see this thing through or whether they're going to check out. We're missing compassion for those who are who don't have as much as we do. We're missing the compassion for those who are down on their luck and broken and battered and bruised. We must show love to those who have done wrong, to those who have hurt, even hate. We must show love to those people. Now, it's hard to do. I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you. Even when those people have done those things to us, when those people have done those things to our families, when those people have done those things to your name, we still must show love in some aspect in order for us to keep moving forward towards that goal, that godly goal. We have to understand that Christ himself, when he hung on a cross, he looked down on the ones who persecuted him and said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He prayed a prayer. Now, I, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I could have been that person. I don't know if I could have been Jesus on the cross praying for those that persecuted me and put me on the cross. Now, I'm a work in progress, just like many of us are. But those are the things that we must do. We must live by his example of loving our brother, of loving those who persecute us, who, of loving those who, in theory, hate us, who talk about us behind our backs, who drag our names through the mud. We must be the ones who show people how to get this thing right. There's someone on the outside watching us trying to figure out how to get through the mess that they're in, how to get over this financial hump, how to get through this coronavirus and this pandemic season, how to get through the grief and the pain of losing family members to addiction. Remember, addiction was the big thing um, some months ago until COVID came around. Now no one wants to talk about addiction, but it's still here. And now everyone's talking about protesting, but COVID is still here. These issues that we are dealing with are still here and affecting everyone in a major way. We can't forget about them. But we have to show people how to get through these seasons, these temporary seasons of grief, these temporary seasons of pain, these temporary seasons of setback. We have to show them how to get through them. And the only way to get through them is through by the love of Jesus. The world is screaming for help and looking for a way to navigate these turbulent times. Jesus is the GPS that can help navigate these rough seas. But because of all of the distractions and noise, we, we see them every day on the news, the distractions, the noise. We see them coming from D.C., from Washington, on Capitol Hill, all the distractions to keep our mind off of the focus, off of the main thing, and the main thing is Jesus. If we make him the main thing, everything else should fall in line. Now, I, now I understand we are still going to go through some things. But as long as we have him in the front and not in the rearview mirror, we are going in the right direction. Amen. People may not be able to see him until we show them. And I'm here to tell you today that um, the world we live in is chaotic um, it seems out of control. But for the believer, there's a way out. There, for the believer, there's comfort. There, For the believer, there is a thing called grace and mercy. Now understand, again, things um, aren't always going to be easy. Life and living is not always going to um, be favorable. But with Jesus Christ, with the love of our Lord and Savior, we can get through anything. He won't put anything on us that we can't bear. He says, take upon my yoke, for it is easy. He's simply saying, hey, let me help you out. You don't have to carry this burden by yourself. So I, I encourage you all, when you're out and about, 
when you're doing your thing, when you're, if you're protesting or demonstrating, if you're at the job speaking to people, if just in your normal day of living, ask yourself this question. What am I interjecting into the atmosphere? What am I adding to the situation? Are you contributing chaos to the con and confusion to the conversation? Is your job or is your job ad um, adding peace and God's presence to the protest? I don't know. Those are the questions you should ask yourself because at the end, at the end of it all, what we should be doing in our character, how we operate, how we move, what we say, what we do, how we interact with each other, what we should be doing. Our ultimate goal is showing someone Jesus. That is it for me today. I want to pray for you today that you have a wonderful week, that this week shows you some things that you haven't seen before, um, that you are able to grow. And through those experiences that you, you, you will be able to give God the glory and thank him for something as simple as hearing the birds chirp and seeing the sunshine. Our Father, our God, we come to you once again, giving you thanks. Thank you for those things that we may have taken for granted, Father. We thank you for the blessing of life, the blessing of living, the blessing of loving. We thank you for all that you're in the midst of doing, Father. We thank you for um, giving us each other and giving us the protection to see each other. Now we ask that you continue to walk with us, Father, holding our hands and even during those times when when life has gotten heavy for us, Father, we ask that you simply carry us through those rough and tough sands of time. We thank you and we bless you for all that you're doing. We, we thank you and we bless you for all that you have yet to do, Father. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, next week, something special. We've got something special. Um, I'm going to be doing a live, um, a live service. Uh, from the parking lot of parking lot of Grace Community Church in Lorraine, Ohio, we are going to be going live next week, and that's going to be something really special because um, we're giving people uh, an opportunity to fellowship again, but practice social distancing, and um, it's just good for for believers to kind of lay their eyes on each other just to see how each other is doing, and to be able to pray uh, corporately together. Um, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing. It's 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 a good start, and and I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully I will see you there. We'll be at Grace Community next week at 11 o'clock in the great city of Lorraine, Ohio. I love you. I hope to see you. You stay safe and get out there and enjoy this day. God bless you.